talk about domain and range. Now, domain are all the values of the independent variable. Um, and the independent variable is usually x. So the, all the possible values, all possible values of x for a function or equation, domain. Range, um, dealing with the dependent variable, which the dependent variable is also the y variable, typically. So all possible values of the y. So for any function, any equation. So if I ask for domain and range, domain values of x that are possible um, for this specific function, and then range all the possible values of y. So we'll start easy. Um, example one, we'll just have a list of uh, ordered pairs, two, three, Let's say 0, 1, um, negative 3, 2, 4, 6, whatever. And because this is a limited amount of points, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, only 4 points, um, I can actually list the values that go into my domain and list the values that go into my range. I can actually list them. So capital D is going to be my domain, capital R is going to be my range. Um, and because I can list them, I'm going to represent my domain and range in set notation. So I usually like to go from least to greatest. Now, before I do that, I want to just ask, you know, do you think this is a function? Just to recap that, is it a function? Well, for every x, there corresponds exactly one y. There is no repeated x with different y coordinates, right? I have 2 here, 0 here, negative 3, 4. There's no repeated x coordinate with different y coordinates. So that means that this is a function. I mean, I could still find a domain and range for any relation but just for a recap yes this is a function my domain my domain represents all the um, x coordinates and I'm going to go in order from least to greatest so the, the smallest x coordinate is negative 3 so negative 3 is one of the values that goes into my domain the next value that is um, in my domain is 0 the next x coordinate is 2 and the last x coordinate is 4 so I have four values that go into my domain Range, um, all the values of y. So let's see, from least to greatest. The smallest value of y that is possible for this particular case is 1. The next is the 2. Um, the next value of y is 3, and the last one is 6. So my range for this case represents this set of values from 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, if I ask for the domain and range of this, this is my domain and this is my range. And this is a very simple, basic um, case because... Um, we can actually list the values that represent the domain and range. Now, that's not always the situation because, my example too, let's just, uh, here, let's do a circle. Figure not joint to scale, okay? This is a circle. Um, so the center's at the origin, even though it doesn't look like it. The center's at the origin, and the distance from the center to every end is 3. So up 3, over 3, over 3, over 3. Um, so my radius would be 3. Figure not drawn to scale. But in any, anyway, I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect to find the domain and range. Now, first let me just ask to recap, is this a function? Well, if it's a graph that I'm looking at to determine if it is a function, I would use the vertical line test. And if I draw a vertical line um, along this graph, notice that it crosses two points on, on the graph at any point along um, the circle. So because the vertical line test does not work here, or at least it doesn't pass the vertical line test, this is not a function. I should not be able to draw a vertical line and touch two times on the graph if it is a function. So therefore this is not a function. But I can again, like I said, find the domain and range of any relation or any function. Now. Domain, all the values of x. So if I'm looking for the domain of this, I'm looking at all the values of x, which means all the values along the x-axis, um, all the values of x that exist for this circle. Where are the points? Um, so in this case, notice that the smallest x-coordinate technically here would be negative 3 over here at this you know, end of this circle. And the, the largest value of x for this um, circle is positive 3. And there exist x-coordinates all between them because there's points along this whole circle. So I can't necessarily list the actual x-coordinates because there's an infinite number of values 
along this line from negative 3 to 3 because I'm including decimals, I'm including fractions, I'm including whole numbers. So I can't list them all because I'll be sitting here forever. So we use what's called interval notation. And if you're not familiar with it, you need to get familiar with it because we use interval notation in higher level math and you see it much more often. Interval notation says we're going to go from this value to this value and everything in between is included in, in, in this case in the domain. So start for my smallest x because I'm looking at domain. Smallest x coordinate is negative 3. So my interval notation is going to start at negative 3. If I'm including that point, which I am because negative 3 does exist on this graph, then I'm using what's called a bracket. When you use a bracket in interval notation, that implies that you're including this value in your interval of numbers. Starting at this point, comma, ending at the largest value of x in this case, which is positive 3, am I including this in my domain? Yes, because I actually have a point that exists on the circle at the x-coordinate of 3. I'm using a bracket. My domain says, this is my interval notation, that all the values of x from negative 3 to positive 3 and in between, including negative 3, including positive 3, exists or are possible for this graph in my domain. Let's do it again for the range. So the smallest value of y now for the range. So now I'm going vertically. The smallest value of y is negative 3. So to do my range, I'm going to start at negative 3 and then move vertically. So from this point, now am I including negative 3? I'm including negative 3 because I actually have a point on this graph at the y-coordinate negative 3, and there's a bracket to imply that in my interval notation. And I have everything included up until positive 3 in my range. Am I including positive 3? Yes. So I put a bracket there because there exists a point at that, at that um, case where the y-coordinate is positive 3. So the range in this case says, well, I'm going from the y-coordinate negative 3 to the y-coordinate positive 3, and I have y-coordinates in between the two of them in my, fun in my um, graph, and I'm including negative 3, and I'm including positive 3. So this is my domain and range for this particular example in interval notation, which is what we're going to use. Now this is obviously an easy case because everything is very similar. You're going to see a whole lot of different graphs. I can't do every single graph that exists, but I'll do a couple. Let's do, if you don't know the name here, you will know the name, a parabola. And what we call the vertex is here at that y-coordinate of negative 2. And I want the domain and I want the range of this graph. Now my first question is, just for recap, just for review, is it a function? Well, does it pass the vertical line test? I say yes, because anywhere that I hold my, that I uh, draw a vertical line along this graph, it only touches the graph at one point, so, right? It's not crossing the graph twice whenever I draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph. So this is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Now let's talk about the domain. All the values of x that exist for this function. Now. Even though this crosses the x-axis at whatever this point is, it doesn't even matter. Notice that there's an arrow here that points in this direction, which implies that it keeps going this way. If it keeps going this way, then that means it's continuing in the negative x direction. So that means it's going all the way to negative infinity. So the smallest value of x for this parabola is actually negative infinity. And this is our infinity symbol if you have not seen it before. So my domain starts at negative infinity. Now, again, in interval notation, we say, do I use a bracket or do I use a parenthesis? I use a bracket, like we did in the last example, when I'm including the value on that end of the interval. If I use a parenthesis, I'm not including that value. With negative infinity and positive infinity, we always use a parenthesis when we're doing interval notation because... Um, you can't technically ever reach it, so it's not necessarily that we're including it. So always a parenthesis when we have infinity or negative infinity on an interval, an in interval notation. Um, so I'm starting at negative infinity, and I'm going, I have values of x all the way along this graph in this direction too. Don't forget that even though it crosses here, it keeps going. So again, it's going to keep going in the positive x direction as well. So the, the largest value of x for this particular case is positive infinity parenthesis around infinity and negative infinity. So my domain 
in interval notation is negative infinity to positive infinity, which, if you've heard before, all real numbers. Any value of x is possible for a parabola. My range, however, is different. Range is the y, right? Vertical. And the smallest value of y here is negative 2. It doesn't have anything below that value. So I'm starting my range at negative 2. Am I including negative 2 in my interval? I'm including negative 2 because I actually have a point here at this um, vertex. And um, the y coordinate is negative 2. So I'm using a bracket to include that value. Now what is the largest value of y? Notice that I have values of y along the um, graph all the way up, all the way to the positive y direction, all the way to positive infinity. So the largest value of y here is positive infinity. I use a parenthesis always around infinity. So look at this looks funnier than this one. This looks funny. This is a good example because it says I'm going from negative and two. Negative two, including negative two. Negative two is part of my interval. And everything above negative two for my range. If you have seen this before, it looks like this. Y is greater than or equal to negative two. This would be your range in set notation. So this means the same thing as this. They both mean everything bigger than or equal to negative two in my Y for my range. We don't use this as often when we're talking about intervals in higher level math. We use interval notation. This one says all real numbers. Okay, domain and range for these. Now, 